What's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with a review for Love and Hip Hop ATL. This is season 10, episode number two, and the episode was titled Good Trouble, you guys. Whoo! This episode was a little triggering. I ain't, I'm not gonna lie to you, it was triggering. Um, so, yeah, you guys, before we get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video, Oh my bad, y'all ain't gonna burp me out face. Or any other video on the channel, and you're not already subscribed to the channel, then do me a big solid favor. We are 18 subscribers away from a thousand. So hit that subscribe button, you guys. Hit the notification bell button. Hit all the buttons on the channel. Like them buttons up, you guys. Now, with that being said, without further ado, you guys, we're gonna go ahead and just jump into this episode review. All right, all right. Ciao. Oh, God. You know what? I'm going to get the easiest story out of the way. Erica Mena. I really feel bad for Erica just because of what Erica is going through currently. The fact that her childish ass husband is over, went to Jamaica. Granted, I know he was over there working and his birthday was um, on the 4th of July. God, he's a cancer. I cannot believe he's a freaking cancer. Oh, God. He's a cancer. I'm a cancer. My birthday is this Friday. I don't act like Safari. You know, I'm, I, I found out two people that are cancers, and I don't act like either one of them. Safari is one of them. Kevin Hart is the other. Don't act like either one of them. So Erica's sister, is, I think her name is Lisa. She's at the crib with um, Erica, right? Erica and them teeth. Those teeth are really huge. I meant to say that in last week's review. God, like my orthodontist, because you know when I went to, I have when I wore my braces, and there's a little bit of there's a the thing is he right here, there the enamel has chipped off, so they're they're not they're not even, which makes it look like I still have a gap, but I don't. It's just because those teeth are not even. They're not gonna it's not gonna close all the way, so they're like the only way we can fix that is if you get um. We could do a filling to try to fill it, or we could do veneers. I'm like, oh God, no, I'm not doing veneers, because I just think that veneers are ugly, and unfortunately, I think Erica's are hideous. Um, so Erica tells us and her sister that you know she went and she got a checkup, right? And she found out that she was pregnant. She found out that she is almost she's almost due. Wait a minute, when did they film this? See, this is the thing with Love and Hip Hop right now. It's the editing. The editing is off for me. The editing, you know what? The editing is completely off. Because Yandy, if if we think about it, Yandy is in Kentucky for Breonna Taylor's murder, for Breonna Taylor. That happened in, uh, didn't that happen in March? of 2020 and Erica is three, you know she says she's three months away Erica was due July 18th my birthday two days after my birthday July 16th July June and May it can't be that's what I'm saying this, I just thought about that the editing for this show is off because if you think about last week's episode when Erica was talking to Safari right that last scene where she was in a white Erica was pregnant in that scene. The editing is really off with this show. The editing is off. Because like I said, because remember, in that first, like, like I said in last week's review, in that first scene that Erica was in with Sierra and with Bambi, Erica was drinking. She was drinking wine. So she wasn't pregnant in that scene. But then the last scene of the episode, Erica was visibly pregnant. I said Erica looked like she might have been about three or four months pregnant at that point. And Erica said that, you know, she didn't know that she was pregnant because of the stress from her husband, which that's not uncommon. I will say it's not uncommon for a woman to not know that she's, you know, pregnant. You can still have a period and you never even get a baby bump. Like I have a like my cousin, my cousin, um, my little cousin, he's now he's he's just he's about to turn seven Eight, not seven. He's about to turn eight in August, I believe. I think he turns eight in August. My cousin was pregnant for with him, 
she had no idea she was pregnant and she, unfortunately she drank throughout the entire pregnancy god she drank throughout the entire pregnancy she didn't know she was pregnant she went to the bathroom one morning thought she had to you know go number two but nope my little cousin fell out in the toilet my little cousin was in the toilet because she didn't know that she was pregnant none of us knew that she was pregnant like she i mean she never she never even gained i mean she didn't gain an ounce of weight so it's not uncommon but the I, like i said the editing for the show is just a little bit off for me but you know i really like i said i do feel bad for erica because erica went into we know that erica and safari's son legend is in the nicu currently because he was born premature because of the stress that she was going through with her childish husband safari my prayers go out my prayers really do go out to erica erica might not be my favorite person on love and hip-hop but my prayers definitely go out to erica and to her her baby uh, but um he was born with a, he was just, he was just born a few weeks early but i mean that's still he's still premature but yeah definitely prayers go out to erica but let's move on you guys All right, guys. Next up, let's talk about Amaretta the Great. Um, I never heard of Amaretta the Great, but listen to her music. I'm like, okay, I can I can vibe with this. She has a, I mean, if you want to hear a deep country accent, that is what Amaretta the Great was giving me. Um, so Amaretta lets us know that she has been managing herself for four years, so she's in the market for management. Um. Hmm. I mean, I get where she's coming. I, I, uh, I mean, I get it. She needs management. Sometimes people can do things on their own. And, you know, she was talking about how people wanted to market her, how they wanted to market her with her wearing the, you know, the blonde wigs, wearing heels. That's not her. I think when it comes to management, if you just express to people who you are, they can either choose to work with you or not. She did say that, you know, um, we did see her doing a meet and greet and young baby Tate showed up and we find out that they both follow each other from on um, Instagram. And then, you know, young baby Tate tells um, I'm ready to go to, you know, come to the studio and hang out with her. Right. And we see young baby Tate and I'm ready. She goes to the studio. And I will say that I like this relationship, this vibe with them. I hope that it lasts. I hope that it lasts because, you know, in the industry, when it comes to women in rap, they always pit women against each other, which it doesn't have to be that. I don't get that. You pit the women against each other, but when it comes to the men, fun competition, right? But the women, it's got to be who's the queen, who's at the, who, who got who, who's it really with the women. And I think it's it, it comes from men saying, you know, oh, you got to be the queen of this. You got to be better than that girl. You got to be better than her. You got to be better than her. So I like their interactions with each other right so um young baby tate tells amaretta the great that she has to go out to la right to do some work and she's going to, out there to see a guy that she's talking to i didn't catch his name she said it so fast i didn't catch the, the man's name um so then amaretta the great tells us that you know her mom was her first manager right and she said that she fired her mom <laughs> She fired her mom, and she felt that her mom was not always there for her. My hat is off to oh, forever, my lady. Please don't listen to it. Just. All right, we done. <laughs> um, I always look at people who have their parents as their managers. I'm like, how do you do? How do you? How do you balance that? Like, how do you juggle? mom manager daughter client son client like how do you manage that I've, I've always wondered that I couldn't do it and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later too about people working more specifically nepotism don't understand it I never I, I we'll talk about it so then we do see Amaretta as she's talking to her mom right her mom says you know like I feel some type of way that I have to go on on social media and find out about what performances you're doing, what you're doing here, what you're doing there. And Amarella's like, well, that's because of you. And she was like, what do you mean that's because of me? She, she said, you created that because you pushed, uh, uh, because of you pushing me off. Her mama said, you fired me. 
So then her mom says, you know, and I also don't like the fact that you made a diss song about me. And Amaretta says, I didn't make a diss song about you. What I did was I wrote a song telling my story about how you got with a man. That man didn't treat you right, but you put that man above your kids. And that fostered, uh, you know, that fostered an unhealthy relationship between you and your kids. You know, I never understand when people do that. I've, I've saw that. I've saw it happen where people, women or women put men over their kids. I'm like, how do you do that? You gave birth to them. How do you put another, how do you put a stranger? It's not even, it's not even the kid's father. It's an outside man. You put them above your kids. I've never understood that. You cared, the, you cared your kids for nine months, gave birth to them, and you still put a man above them. Never makes sense to me. Boss Milan. All right, you guys. Next up, let's talk about Kirk and Rashida. Baby, this storyline right here is the dumbest if I've ever saw dumb in my life. So, Kirk and Rashida, they're homeschooling um little Carter. Everything's cool with that, right? Now, with the pandemic, you guys remember last season that Kirk, when production came in there, and told them that they had to shut down filming. You guys remember Kirk was like, how we going to live? And I was like, y'all, I was like, well, y'all got other businesses. I mean, Rashida was doing her, um, her, you know, her press stuff online before she even went into the um, storefront. And I mean, I don't know nothing about, I mean, I don't know what they're doing with the music, but that's neither here nor there. And then, but I, I didn't even think about Frost, Frost Bistro. I'm going to keep it real with you guys. I didn't think about that. But I'm like, Rashida still can do press online. That's still some income right there, right? And hopefully, y'all have been smart enough to save up some money. So that way, you know, you're not ass out, right? So whatever. So now things are starting, at this point, I don't know when they were starting to film. But at this point, things were starting to open back up. So they were able to open up Frost Bistro, right? But they're having a bit of issues at Frost Bistro because Kirk Jr.'s girlfriend and Kai's girlfriend, which I thought people said Kai was gay, but that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. That ain't got nothing to do with the price of 10 China. I just thought people, I could have swore I saw a video of Kirk. I mean, um, Kai, never mind. Let's mind my business. But Kirk Jr.'s girlfriend and Kai's girlfriend, they had a fight with each other, right? And I think Kelsey, baby voice Kelsey, tried to break it up and fists were thrown, right? So now they got to figure out what to do because this whole fight that happened is starting to ruin the relationships between Kirk Jr., Kai, and Kelsey, right? And they don't want that to happen. So then, you know, Kirk says, well, you know what, Rashida, I'm going to go and see the accountant and, you know, try to figure out what's going on with this one. So Kirk goes, talks to the accountant, right? The accountant tells Kirk that they are in the red and they are um over a million dollars, right? And he tells them that Frost Bistro has a lot of spoilage and they need to control it. He said spoilage, not spillage. So Kirk was like, you know, at the bistro, you know, I be seeing Kelsey. She be behind the bar making a lot of drinks. And then, you know, Kai's supposed to be managing the place. And, you know, Kirk Jr., he be doing this over here as well. I'm like, Kirk, he said spoilage. You do know what spoilage means, right, my buddy? Spoilage means y'all are losing, y'all are throwing away more food than you're using. Like, y'all are spoiling food. I don't get that, though. How are you spoiling the food? I would think that you would, you would have, because he said the inventory. He said inventory. Your overhead, your inventory. He ain't said shit about a goddamn drink. He didn't say nothing about a drink. He ain't said nothing about management. He said inventory, spoilage, your food. That means what he's saying is your food is going bad. Your food is going bad. So that means that y'all are so that means that y'all are not well, one, it could be a fact, I think, of you just don't have enough you don't have a, a lot of people coming into the restaurant. That could be one thing. But it also could be the fact that they menu is high and higher as hell. I last night while I was watching Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, I was like, let me go look at um you know um the Bistro's uh menu. 
I saw a, a steak for $54. I'm like, hell to the nah. Like their menu is expensive as hell. And I think that might be one thing that they want to look into the menu because I think that could, and that could be a big thing. Your menu is expensive. Your menu is hella expensive. So it might be, the spoilage might be your most expensive items. People don't want to pay for that. That could be a thing. You might have to just reevaluate some things. You might have to say, hey, let's do a, uh, and then their hours are, their hours are, are weird. So Monday through Wednesday, they are closed, right? They're open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I think they're open on Saturday from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. So y'all are not open a lot. They're not open that long. So that that as well might be a part of the issue with the spoilage. He said, because the man says spoilage. The man says spoilage. So, and then another thing is, like, I see a lot of restaurants where they have, um, in their freezers, they'll have their food section out by the days. Like, you have you have food that you, you need to cook it all by Monday. You have food Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday every day of the week basically so i think they i think that they might need to work a, a they might need to do a lot of they got to do a lot of a revamping because like i said the menu is expensive as fuck the, the even a drink even the drink menu is expensive as hell and i've looked at olg's i've looked at olg's menu and olg is not that expensive it is a little bit pricey but it's not as pricey as this frost bistro so I think that that may be something they want to look into is your hours of oper- number one, your hours of operation. You are closed Monday through Wednesday. That is three days right there. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. You're closed. You're only open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You're only open four days out of the week. And like I said, your hours of operation, you're open in the evening. Well, like, yeah, I don't have a Like, I think if you had a lunch rush, that could definitely alleviate some of that spoilage because like i said once again kurt the man didn't say anything about spillage he said spoilage meaning you're 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 giving you're getting rid of more food than what you're using you're throwing away more food like you you get rid of more food than what you are actually cooking your inventory you got to work on the inventory yes you might have the inventory but you're probably throwing away half of it because it's spoiled I'm just putting that out there so then Kirk decides to tell him about the kids I'm like really why are you telling your accountant about your kids didn't understand that but you know me and Rashida we gonna have a you know we gonna have a staff meeting to get this together whatever Kirk so Kirk and Rashida have the staff meeting with the kids right those kids one the one thing I will say I don't know how old Kirk Jr. is, but I know that Kelsey, I think Kelsey is either my, is a little bit, I think Kelsey might be a little bit younger than me, or she might be my age, but I think Kelsey is actually younger than I am. But the thing that I have an issue with, with the kids is, I know that Kai is a teenager, or he might be in his early 20s. The thing is with this, with the, with the kids running, with the kids running a restaurant, It is a bunch of inexperience. It's their one, they don't have the experience. Two, they are, from what I could see, they come off very immature. So the thing that you should, I think the thing that will work best for Kirk and Rashida, it's fine to have the kids in the restaurant doing doing whatever, but you might want to bring in like a co, like with Kai, you might want to bring in a co-manager, someone that can co-manage with him so that way it's not all on him you have someone that co-manages with him that has the knowledge and the experience in the restaurant industry with uh kelsey behind the bar yeah she can be a bartender but also have someone there that once again has the knowledge the experience you know that has a mixology degree you know that knows about mixology and stuff like i think that would be what would be best Um, i mean i'm just thinking that's the smartest thing i could be wrong you know, sometimes I am, but I don't think I'm wrong in this situation. But yeah, that's it. Let's move on and wrap the episode up. All right, you guys. So to wrap the episode up, let's talk about um, Yandy, right? 
so we all know that Yandy's whole thing this season is, you know, her um her social her her on her stroll. We all know that Yandy's thing this season is her doing her social activism, right? And as we see Yandy, she's down there in um in um Louisville, Kentucky, right? And they were outside, I believe they were outside of the DA's office, Daniel Cameron's office, right? And I was looking at Tamika Palmer, Breonna Taylor's mother, right? When I think, when I, I still to this day, when I think about the situation with Breonna Taylor, I still get choked up. I still get upset about it because nothing has been done. And unfortunately, I don't believe anything is going to be done in that case because they just don't care is what they're telling us that they don't care, especially when they gave us the charges of wanton, wanton endangerment because of a stray bullet that went into her neighbor's apartment that didn't hurt her neighbor, that didn't kill her neighbor. And I'm not, you know, I'm not taking away from her neighbor, but what I'm saying is you had a woman in her apartment, in her bed, who had bullets in her body and she died. Yes, everybody's lives matter. The person who lived next door to her, their life 100% mattered. I'm going to stop. I'm going to pause right here, you guys.